Before we get started, I just want to let everybody know we started a Discord server. It's totally free, and we'll talk more about it towards the end. Link is in the description. For part two in our VFX series for DaVinci Resolve, we're looking at an incredibly important concept for any compositor, pre-multiplication. Understanding the fundamentals of pre-multiplication will lead you to be able to solve problems with your comps and feel much more confident overall. It's a concept that underpins how images are combined and rendered, ensuring that the final output looks cohesive and visually appealing. Let's begin. What exactly is pre-multiplication? In digital imagery, particularly those with transparent elements, two main components define how an image looks. The color channels, red, green, and blue, and the alpha channel. The alpha channel is crucial as it determines the transparency of each pixel. Pre-multiplication comes into play when these two components interact. It's a process where each color pixel is multiplied by its corresponding alpha value. Imagine you have a strip of solid color. In this case, we'll choose blue. On the left, we see our alpha values, which are measured from zero, or fully transparent, to one, which would be completely opaque. When these values are multiplied by the RGB values in the middle, we get the result on the right, where the blue gets progressively more transparent. In the case of this shade of blue, the RGB values are 0, 133, and 231. Let's keep it relatively simple and say we want to multiply that to make it halfway between transparent and opaque. In other words, we multiply it by a value of 0.5. The resulting blue becomes 0, 67, and 116. Conversely, unpremultiplication applies the same operation but in reverse, removing the alpha information from the pixels and allowing for specific adjustments, which we'll talk about shortly. As a side note, you can see this in action here where the alpha is being multiplied by the RGB to give us these nice, smooth, anti aliased edges. It's the same exact concept, but we're seeing it at play in a slightly different way. So what's the practical application for all this? Well, luckily the math is all done for you under the hood, so you can put the calculator away. All you need to know is when to apply this knowledge. There are times when you'd need this information in the color page of Resolve, but this video will be focusing only on fusion and considerations when compositing specifically. We'll go far deeper into compositing itself in future videos, but there are two main things you need to remember when it comes to pre-multiplication in Resolve and elsewhere. First, you need to always work unpremultiplied when you're applying color corrections or if you apply any color space transformations to your footage. The reason for this might already be apparent. When you pre molt an image, you're altering its RGB values and giving them transparency. Color correction or color space conversions applied to a pre-multiplied image would be influenced by this transparency leading to inaccurate color adjustments. Unpremultiplying the image first restores the original, unaltered color values. We can see this in action in the color correction node in Resolve. I've thrown together a very quick CG composite so you can see this in action. All right, so this is our scene. It's very simple, very silly. Just a bunch of Suzanne heads flying through a valley. Just very quickly put together. So all we need to do is see how pre-multiplication works here. So to explain a bit about all of this down here, just so you know what's happening, this is just our tracking setup. So just use the 3D camera tracker and track the scene. I did use Nuke then to create a um, quick geometry of this scene, so that way there is something for the shadows to fall onto. Um, I did this in Blender, obviously. Very quick, very easy. Probably won't go into the Blender scene, but I may include that as part of the Patreon if you're interested in uh, looking more at these flying heads. This is actually a Boyd's simulation, um, so it's actually pretty cool. Um, I would have a lot of fun with playing around with Boyd's. But anyway, then we just have our Shadow Catcher AOV here. And all that's doing is driving a, let's see, just uh, lower the gain in order to create these shadows. And then we have, in this case, just the diffuse and the glossy. And these are being composited together. We have our diffuse and glossy channels. And those are just broken down from the uh, AOVs that I uh, exported from Blender. And then these are just being composited together. 
We have our denoiser. I have that turned off because it's really heavy. That's just channeling, pumping in the uh, denoising, albedo, and normal in order to reduce the noise, but I actually didn't end up using that. Whoops. That's okay. And then here is where it's important. So we're going to switch to this. So this will be a combination of our glossy, diffuse, and then also the ambient occlusion here. But if we look close, we can see that everything's looking pretty good. That we really didn't need to do much in terms of um, pre-mold or unpre-mold because the the AOVs or the image, the open EXRs um, that we receive from Blender are actually pre-multiplied. So if we look at that alpha, we can see that there's a nice smooth gradient to the edge. So we can tell just by looking at it that we're looking, working on a pre-multiplied image. So now what happens is, so if I disable these divide and multiply operations, we come into this color corrector and we uncheck pre-divide post multiply. When I apply color corrections to this, we start to see some problems. So this is going to then be merged over our background footage and we see this is happening. Now what's happening is we are applying color correction to pre-multiplied images. And that's why everything is getting all kinds of messed up. Now, what we can do, the very the simplest way to do it in Resolve anyway, is to go into the color corrector node and check off pre-divide post-multiply. So now when we come into this corrector and we make adjustments, we're only making those adjustments to our CG footage and not our background plate. Now, generally, and this is something that is, you know, it depends on you as uh, a compositor, um, but it is something that you'd probably want to get into the habit of is having everything be out in the open, that we don't have too many operations happening inside of these nodes, like unpremalt and premalt. So that way it's a bit easier to kind of follow what's going on. So if I go here, this is alpha divide. So that's going to divide our alpha. Now we, we still see that the background plate is still brightened like that. We can see the edges of the alpha. We can see the hard edges where they actually, where it actually ends. We can see that we're now affecting the unpremultiplied image before any changes were made to the values of those pixels. So we're taking the pre-multiplied image from Blender and we're dividing it by its alpha. And we can see that change here. So now all we would need to do then is apply our corrections and then pre-multiply it by using, in this case in Fusion, it's an alpha multiply node. In Nuke, it's a pre-mult node. So what we have here when using alpha divide and alpha multiply is the exact same as using pre-divide, post-multiply, and the color corrector node. Now, what we see here is a common thing that can happen if you double up on your pre-multiplication is that you get this weird black outline on your alpha. And that's because we're doubling up that multiplication and we're making things darker than they should be. So you just want to make sure to do one or the other. So you want to either uncheck pre-divide post multiply or disable or not use these two nodes, alpha divide and alpha multiply. And that's the basics of it. You want to make sure to know what type of images you're getting. If you're creating the images yourself um, in some other program, um, it's up to you to make sure that when you export it, you know exactly how it's being exported, whether it's pre-multiplied or not. And if you're working with a client, you want to make sure to know what you're working with too. Now, it's not, in, in reality, in practice, it's not that big of a deal because you will notice pretty quickly which way it is, but um, it's something you always want to be mindful of because you don't want to end up with weird artifacts or things like that. You don't want to end up with the weird 
over multiplied outline here, but that is the very basics. But I'd say that's enough about pre-malt and fusion to kind of get you going. A second practical rule for pre-malt is to always apply transformations and filters to pre-multiplied images. Transformations like rotating or scaling and filtering operations like blurring affect the edges of objects in an image. When performed on a pre-multiplied image, these operations respect the alpha channel, ensuring that the edges of the transformed or filtered elements blend seamlessly with the background. This is crucial for maintaining the natural appearance of transparent edges and soft shadows. Operations like blurring on a pre-multiplied image treat the color and the alpha channels in a unified manner. This ensures that the resulting changes are consistent across the image, maintaining the relationship between color intensity and transparency. So, these are the basics of pre-multiplication and unpremultiplication. There are some details we didn't quite get into here, but more about this will be covered in a later video where we dive into compositing and resolve properly. If you like this video and want to see more, consider subscribing. We've also recently launched a uh, Discord server. So it's a cool place to come in and chat if you have questions, if you want to know more, if you want to just post your art and have people critique it and talk about it. It's going to be a wonderful place for people to just come and collaborate and create cool stuff and really looking forward to what it might become. So if you want to be a part of uh, making that a cool place, come on in. I'll also be updating the Patreon soon, so if you like what we do here at Soterra, we'd love your support so we can keep making videos like these. I hope you have a great day, and take care.